Hi friends, Taylor from Doom to Fail. We are the podcast that tells you history's most disastrous and calamitous failures um, that we can find. But if you find others, please let us know. Send us an email, doomtofailpod at gmail.com. Today we are revisiting episode 21, part 2 on Grady Styles. So Farris tells us this one. This is about a man named Grady Styles who was in a kind of circus sideshow his whole life because of a deformity with his hands. So he was dubbed the, the lobster boy, um, which is a terrible way to grow up I'm certain you don't want to grow up in in a sideshow and I don't think that we have those anymore for the best but um, Grady ended up murdering and being murdered so listen to that story here with us right now and um, let us know if you have any questions or any suggestions thanks for listening in the matter of the people of the state of California versus Orenthal James Simpson case number BA 097 and so my fellow Americans What your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. So I will transition us to the true crime side of our story. And knowing you, Taylor, you're going to know what I'm talking about here. The drink that I referenced earlier... Sambuca poured into a pint glass with Guinness poured Mm -hmm. after it so that the Sambuca floats. That is referred to as a freak show. Freak show. Yeah. I don't know why. I couldn't understand why why the name, why that was the name that they gave to it, but that's what it's technically called. So that's what we're going to be discussing. It's a real drink and a freak show was a real thing of the past. So is a critical part and a critical component of what we're going to be discussing. So. I personally don't love the term freak show because what we basically did as a society back in the day when these things were prominent was we just took people who were different from us and labeled them as freaks and then charged two bits of gander to stare at them at a human zoo. It doesn't seem very yeah. nice. It's not very nice. That's good. Good conclusion. Yeah. 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 And I found the earliest version of a freak show. It was in the 1600s. And that's where the concept of a freak show started because back then the King of England somehow stumbled across these twins in Genoa, Italy, who were conjoined twins. So one of them was an, I hate to even use the word normal, but you know what I mean? Like a Mm -hmm. a regular dude. And then he had a conjoined twin that was like basically just like a head and part of a shoulder that was Mm -hmm. coming out of his chest. It was called the, normal one quote unquote normal one was called Lazarus the other one was called John and the brother John, I don't know why that's funny I just had to laugh about that I know I know I know I know but I, I, I kind of love this story okay and I'll explain why. so John was the parasitic brother so it really wasn't even like a fully functional human being it was like it was just like grunt and that was basically all I could really do and like maybe blink its eyes every now and then and it basically just like dangled off of Lazarus for the most part Apparently, at one point, this is the part that's amazing about the story, Lazarus was actually sentenced to death because he killed someone. And he got off, this argument actually worked. He got off by saying, if you kill me, then you kill my parasitic brother, and he didn't do anything. Oh, my God. Wait, can he talk? Wait, no. He he said he just, like, grunted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I I was like, you know, kudos to this guy Lazarus for making lemonade out of lemons. But, like, that was a pretty good argument to make. So... More power to yeah. Most of what freak shows consisted of was just people showing, you know, the disabilities that they have. And sometimes people would do other stuff too. For example, there would be people who were ambiguously raced and they would call them some unknown, unknown subspecies of humans. Yeah. Or if there was somebody who was heavily tattooed or heavily pierced, they'd also get a spot on the freak show. But occasionally you'd have people with legitimate talent so you'd have people who would eat flames or swallow swords the guy who would do like nails in his nose and stuff like that yeah yeah yeah. and then you obviously have the folks that have congenital defects like they're they have deformities that are not what people are used to seeing and they also would join freak shows which is a shitty thing to do to people Sometimes it's okay. I'm actually going to say when I actually thought it was a good thing. But for the most part, it was kind of like not a great thing to do to somebody. 
it, I was I wrote here that it's actually kind of funny how some of this stuff still persists to this day. So for example, there's a chain of grocery stores in Texas and it might be elsewhere. I haven't seen it anywhere else. In California, they're known as Randall's, but in Texas, they're known as Tom Thumb. Have you heard of them mm-hmm. before? Mm-mm. Okay. I, it's probably a Texas thing. They are named after a guy who was named General Tom Thumb, who stopped growing at six months old. So in total, he was two feet tall and weighed 15 pounds. And like, not even joking, I am one block in one, I'm at my parents' house right now for listeners. I'm one block from one Tom Thumb and another block from another one behind me. So like, this is like a very pervasive name that caught on all because of this one guy, General Tom Thumb. Another, and that was a P.T. Barnum act. Another famous act was one that involved a guy named Joseph Merrick. Do you remember that name? Um, no. So you might remember his alternate name, which was the mean name that I don't love for him, which was the Elephant Man. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Wait, I'm sorry. I had to go back because Tom, that's not the first time to me used the word, the name Tom Thumb. That is, I mean, well, I don't know. Tom Thumb what, what is a it? character from English folklore. No um, way. Tom Thumb it said, I'm reading Wikipedia. Tom Thumb may have been a real person born in 1519. I was thinking that it was Hans Christian Andersen, but that's Thumbelina. But like Tom Thumb <laughs> is, um, yeah, it's definitely from further back than that. It's like, but it's, I think it's, it makes sense that it's the name for a ridiculously small person. Continue. No, no, you, you, you know what? I might have besmirched Tom Thumb because I just assumed it was named after him because I didn't know there was any other Tom Thumb that ever existed. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a Thumbelina kind of character, I think. Okay, everybody, just discount everything I said there, but trust everything that I say going forward. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, Joseph Merrick. So he was known as the colloquial name for him was the Elephant Man. He mm-hmm. suffered from a disease called Proteus Syndrome, which results in basically just overgrowth of tissue that would lead to just traumatic disfigurement. Like his. Um, his skeleton is on display in some museum in, in the UK and you can tell this guy had it really, really rough. Like it's just cons- overgrowth of tissue everywhere that it shouldn't be. And as a result, he was obviously heavily, heavily disfigured. He was displayed in London when it was, yeah, he was basically dis- displayed in, in, in London for a period of time. This is the part where I think that General Tom Thumb and Joseph Merrick kind of break the mold of like how I think it's mean to do this to people. The reason was that these guys had no options, right? Mm-hmm. So by all accounts, Tom Thumb was being paid $150 a week by P.T. Barnum. And he re- at that time, he basically retired young and super, super rich. Joseph, on the other hand, yeah. he was treated like a complete leper in society. And he had zero income or healthcare opportunities. So this guy who ran this freak show, like, I know that it's not a good thing to do to someone, but like, what else was he going to do? Like, this was his only way to support himself. And on top of that, because Wait a minute. What? I have so many. I'm so sorry. I have to interrupt. I have to interrupt you right now. There was a 1980s movie called The Elephant Man, directed by David Lynch, starring Anthony Hopkins. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and in fact, like, there was, um, so I think it was Bradley Cooper can you fact check me? I think it was Bradley Cooper yeah. played Joseph Merrick on Broadway, actually. Like, like yeah. fairly recently, in the past, like, five to seven years, I, I want to say. No way. Huh. I and mean, they didn't do anything to his body. He just made a weird face. Yeah. Well, it was Bradley That's Cooper, right? Weird. Yeah. He's just, like, yeah. moving his face to the side. Like, and did you watch The Witcher? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In The Witcher, how she, like, has that hump for the first half of it? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, anybody who likes The Witcher show, you got to get Witcher 3 on PlayStation or Xbox. It's incredible. It's so good. I mean, I so, don't know about PlayStation, but The Witcher show is great. But, well, so my other point was that because Joseph was – or jo- Alphan Joseph, whatever you want to call him, because he was such a popular act, a lot of doctors would come and see him. And they were, like, trying to figure out, like, what's going on with this guy? It was I, – I, I didn't write this down, but I think it was in 1996 when they finally discovered that he had this illness. And that's what it actually was. So, like, there was no help mm-hmm. for him, essentially. But, you yeah, know, yeah. It, it is what it is. Like, in the grand scheme of things, it was probably better that he was in this situation than just, like, homeless in the UK, right? Or, like, murdered as a baby. Yeah. Yeah, precisely. 
So we start at this point getting into the early, early 1900s and medical science start becoming a thing. And the world starts falling out of love with freak shows. It started being viewed as basically distasteful, thank, thank God. Laws actually started being passed in some places saying that you can't exhibit someone and charge money to view them because of physical deformity, disease, or general mutation. That's what funny. that also meant is in the latter 1900s, freak shows weren't really a lucrative endeavor. Before, if you had a genetic mutation or disease, you could live a reasonably comfortable life despite it. You know, you felt like shit because people are gawking at you, but it's better than not having that, not having any source of income at all, like I mentioned with the Elephant Man. Mm -hmm. So it was during this time period of the transition from freak shows being like a good <laughs> thing. You know, I get it. So yeah. Yeah. That basically our main character in the story rose to prominence and his name is Grady Stowles. Okay. Which I'm sure you know. I don't know yet. That was a really long introduction, and I'm really excited. And also, I just I cannot wait to share with people these pictures of Bradley Cooper. <laughs> He's <laughs> just <laughs> making a face. I saw, you know what? I saw him do it, like, he, I, do his transformation <laughs> into the elephant man. And I thought it was pretty good. He, like, you can watch clips of him doing it on, like, talk shows and stuff. And I was like, okay, uh, like, you know, for maybe looking better, the way but he, like, has, He's, like, holding one shoulder up higher and making, like, a kissy face. Like, he's not... Yeah. There's, like, no attempt to make him look like anything else. They just, like, Bradley Cooper making weird face. Anyway. Because it's Bradley Cooper. You can't put him in disguise. <laughs> it ruins the entire point of It looks Bradley ridiculous. Cooper. Like, I can't, right. I can't even. So I'm going to stop looking at it because it's too much. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. So Grady's alternate name is the Lobster Boy. So oh, okay. the reason I bring this up and the re reason I gave that long intro is because... I think that that plays a part in what's going to end up happening here because you have a guy in Grady Styles who is raised when being a freak mm -hmm. is a good thing or like a lucrative thing to do. And he catches the tail end of that. And yeah, there's a steep decline in that. I'll, so back then, well, you know what? I'm digressing. I'll, I'll tell you the justification here in a moment. Again, starting off right off the bat, I'm going to say I don't love making fun of people with like situations like this guy has. But I will say in this case, uh, not because Grady had a disability, but because he's a total rampaging, violent, drunk piece of shit. Uh, he got exactly what was coming to him, and his disability yeah. had nothing to do with that. So I'm just going to preface all this. Grady was born with a condition known as actrodactyly, which is a genetic condition where the central digits of the hand and or the feet – are missing so basically okay. you end up in large part with some amalgamation of like a pinky and like a thumb or a big gotcha. toe and a pinky toe it, essentially that it gives the appearance of a claw basically like you only have these digits and a lot of times they're they have other issues where like th those digits are longer than they should be anyway so it looks mm -hmm. even more off essentially Grady's case was particularly bad because he actually had it in both his hands and his feet. So he only had claws, like four digits, four claws on, on all his appendages. Got it. Uh, the condition was actually pretty well documented in Grady's family history. So Grady's family had had this condition for generations, including Grady's dad, Grady Sr. Sr. came up in the freak show, freak show circuit back when this wasn't a disreputable thing to be a part of. And he leveraged his deformity to make a good living for the family. So by all accounts, he made like seventy to $80,000 a year doing this, which like that's really, really good money in a situation yeah. like this. Like, because you think of like somebody live, working at a freak show, like you assume they live in like a tent, right? Like, I mean, this is like he was able to actually support a family off the back of his disability. Grady's not going to be in that exact same position. But like that's what he was accustomed to, right? Mm -hmm. Eventually, you know, Grady's born, and then he goes on the road with Senior, and they perform together. Again, it's worth noting that despite everything I'm about to say about the kind of person that Grady grew up to be, this had to be shitty, right? Like, I mean, I think about like how most kids they want to fit in with other kids, and if mm -hmm. you're someone that is born like this, you're not just like called a freak, but then your dad monetizes your condition, and that can't be a good feeling. And so I'm, yeah. I'm making a lot of excuses for this guy. His economic situation, the fact that he probably felt shitty about him, like I do think all of that plays a factor in what ends up happening or who he ends up becoming. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Totally. So, yeah. 
because Rady had acrodactyly in his legs or his feet as well, he really only had two options for mobility. One was a wheelchair, but the most common way he would move around is you just use his upper body to just shuffle his legs forward and move that way. Mm -hmm. As a result of that, he became incredibly strong in his upper body, like abnormally strong. Multiple reports would indicate how freakishly strong this guy ended up becoming. He's basically just doing a gymnast routine for 24 hours a day, all day long for his entire life. So yeah. that, that helps. Getting, yeah, oh my God, strong. totally. As Grady grew up, uh, he he got married. He had three kids he, with a woman named uh, Mary who worked at the freak show too. She had no conditions. Like she was like just a staffer at the freak show that Grady was at. They fell in love. They ended up having kids. Only one of the kids ended up being born without actually a girl named Kathy. The other ones basically did what Grady's dad did to him. They joined Grady on the freak show. At the freak show. It's Does so it... weird saying that word. It's just like, it feels so gross. Is there another word for it? No, what, that's um... what it was. Is there anything else that it does? Oh, I guess you call it a sideshow. I guess you call it a sideshow. Yeah. 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 I'm finding um, the popular culture of it where, like, I mean, there was an American horse story called Freak. Wait, was it called? Yeah, Freak yeah. Show? I, it was, yeah. I, yeah. And there is a lobster boy in it. Yeah. Um, it definitely gets better at the first. It's weird. It's one of the, it's one of the iffy ones. But um, no, what was I going to say? Oh, it was, so there's nothing else besides the the finger thing. Like, it doesn't like affect anything else. It's just that. Just that. Yeah. Psychologically, mentally, he was all sound. Uh, okay. Well, absent, I mean, sure. everything else. Yeah. So uh, it's also worth noting here, in addition to everything else that's going on, Brady was also like a drunk, but like not in like a fun, good time kind of a way. His wife would later claim, after the events we're going to discuss here, that the only times that he wasn't drinking when he was awake was between 8 and 10 a.m. <laughs> so he was like constantly drinking, essentially. He was aggressive. Like he was like, drinking water during that time. <laughs> Yeah, who knows? I mean, if you look at pictures of him, he looks like a picture of a guy who's been drinking nonstop. Like, he, he looks rough. He looks like he's, he's having a rough time. But he also paired that with a three-pack-a-day cigarette habit, which also doesn't help oh, anything. God. No. That's, that's it, terrible. He smelled terrible. He probably smelled horrible. And neighbors <laughs> in their small, small Florida town they lived in would regularly hear just belligerent screaming from their house as Grady would regularly get drunk and berate and abuse his family. He would physically beat the shit out of his wife and his kids with his hands. And like, well, he, his hands were like basically pinchers. <laughs> he would like grab them yeah. and choke them. And he was strong as shit. Like he would, <sighs> he would be able to throw them around like crazy. There's one story where that daughter I mentioned earlier, Kathy, uh, she was pregnant. And she tried to stop Grady from beating her mom. Like got in the middle of it. And Grady ended up beating Kathy so bad that she ended up going into early labor like that moment. Mm. He was he was a jerk. He was a really, really again, I kind of understand part of it given his background and all that, but like still he's a terrible person. Yeah, no excuse to like beat the shit out of your family. Right, right, exactly. So eventually Mary grew tired of this treatment and she leaves Grady. She ends up marrying a new guy and she left the kids with him. So like not a good woman either, basically. Yeah. The the eldest daughter, uh, she was named Donna, and Donna wanted to basically extract herself from this living arrangement. So she agreed to marry this poor, poor bastard named Jack Lane. Grady, as with most abusers, could feel the controlling grip he had on his family slipping away. First his wife leaves him, marries another mm -hmm. man, then the daughter wants to leave him as well. So he's he's lit. He's he's completely pissed at this point. And the day before the wedding, Grady asked Jack over to discuss something like the marriage. I don't know. The details are hazy again on this stuff. And it was during this meeting that Grady ends up shooting Jack in the back and killing him. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's his daughter's fiance? Yeah. This is literally the night before the marriage, the wedding. He does this. Grady oh, would no. obviously yeah. – yeah, he would obviously get arrested. And he got he – got, um, he put on a self-defense claim, is like, because and people believed it because, like, you look at this guy and, like, dude, he's basically just like an upper torso, and like, he just put on an act of, like, dude, I'm disabled, like, I can't do this stuff, like, this guy was gonna kill me, like, I, he made that whole argument. He ended up being found guilty on third degree murder charges, which, like, is better than first and second degree, but still pretty bad. But 
because mm-hmm. of his condition, they're like, what do we do with this guy? You can't put right. him in a normal cell. Like people will just throw him around like a volleyball. Like, and so they decided that we'll just release him on probation. We're going to give him 15 years probation and we're going to release him. That was what the court decided to do for killing a guy, like a kid, basically. Like, absolutely. This oh is God. so Florida. This is the most Florida story I've ever heard. So, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of Florida stories. Pretty good. What you, uh, yeah. Yeah. Apparently, for a brief period of time after all this happened, Grady goes on the straight and narrow. He quits drinking and just like, tries to be a more sensible, reasonable human being. During this time, Mary decides to leave her husband and not only gets back with Grady, they remarry. It's crazy. Yeah. We're like, you should never do that. You should never, it's like calling, it's like drunk calling or texting your ex. Like, just don't do it. Definitely don't remarry them. Yeah. Not a good move. So obviously the whole not drinking thing doesn't last very long. And he starts beating the shit out of her again. Because <laughs> of course he does. Like You're not going to change yeah. this guy. By this point, Mary had apparently had enough and decided to do something about Grady. Mary had a son with the guy she left Grady for originally. The, the son's name is Henry Glenn Newman. And, oh, I wrote it here. I forgot. So she, she the, Mary, Mary loved Carney guys. So the guy she left Grady for was called the Midget Man. So he was a little person. Okay. And, yeah, and they ended up having a child together. And that, that child was named Harry Glenn Newman Jr., Mary ends up asking Harry Jr. to take care of Grady after sustaining tremendous abuse. And Harry did so by offering $1,500 to another freak show worker named Chris Wyant to kill Grady. And Chris, no qualms. Again, this goes back to my story where I'm like, how do these people just find each other? Like, it's just like, they're like magnets. They come together. It's so wild to me. You just ask the first um, guy he meets and he's like, yeah, I'll, I'll do it for $1,500. bucks." Mine- I was, was laughing he, when you one time when you were talking about the people in Florida, and you're like, this guy's just tripping over scumbags. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's so true. I don't get how they come together. It's just like they're, yeah. I mean, good for them. They have a network, you know? Uh, they have a, more of a network for that than I do. So kudos. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad Chris, you Good for you. Yes, of course. Of course. Chris obviously agrees to this and immediately just goes over to the trailer that Grady's in. He looks in the window, sees Grady's just like shit house drunk, watching television. He opens the door, goes inside, point blank, shoots him in the head and kills him. So, so this is the son of Grady's wife that she had during the time that she was married to someone else? Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, no, Easy. So, so Chris is the friend of that Oh, it's son. not even the son. It's the it's friend not even of the son. son. Exactly. So Chris is just like looking to kill someone. Just somebody just ask me. Somebody just ask me. Anybody, anybody who wants me to do it, like this is this, dude, it, 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 they're all living in like a commune, right? Like, these are all these are all freak show staffers and actors and whatever. Like they're all like together, and so I don't know. I guess easy, easy going over there. But there's like, uh, do you watch Bones? <laughs> no, probably not. There's just like so whatever. They're like investigating things and like. The whole thing is like the woman Bones is really smart, and then like the man is David Boreanaz or whatever from Buffy. Yeah, and Angel. He, he's like, yeah, 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 exactly. He's like the cop, and she's like the like really smart scientist. But for some reason, that makes absolutely no sense. They have to solve a case at the circus, so they become circus performers to go solve the case. And you're like, why would anyone ever ask you to do that? It's just really it's... funny, and they like, but they like listen to their little trailer and like learn how to like juggle, or it's it's really stupid, but but funny. That's but so yes, funny. I know exactly. But I can picture like a circus traveling circus. Da, 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 like right now, I know everyone knows yeah. what it means. You yeah. know what's funny is this entire time while I was researching this, I was only thinking about um the Amer- that American Horror Story season, which like I couldn't get through because I actually didn't think it was that good at all. I think and it's better later. It gets better. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it's not my oh. favorite, but I think that the ending is pretty good. That was one of the. Only ones I could think of American Horror Stories so that I quit halfway through. But I mean, yeah, did you watch, did you ever watch Freaks from like the twenties or whatever? No, no. And you know what's funny is I uh, oh, of course it wouldn't be. Yeah, because I kept trying to as I was researching the whole Freak Show thing. I was like, what was that movie where they go one of us, one? That's of, it. I guess yeah. it's called Freaks, right? Okay, that's Freaks. Yeah, it's from um nineteen thirty two. Yeah, yeah. That that would not have helped the situation of these 
shows and these performers, I don't think. But go, go back to the story. So obviously, we're not dealing with like the smartest people in the world here. Chris, Harry Jr. and Mary were basically immediately suspected of the murder and caught for it. Harry initially was being questioned by police on this murder. He volunteered a polygraph, which he obviously failed and then broke down crying and told the police everything in that, you know, including his mother, including his friend, Chris, all of it. Like he just brought everybody into this situation with him. What? Chris was, yeah, Chris, the guy, the actual gunman himself, he was charged with second degree murder and he got 27 years in prison. Amazingly, Chris was released in 2009. So this guy's out and about walking around right now. That's so crazy because the story starts in like a time that feels completely different. Dude, than ours. It, it, that's nuts, doesn't it? Like you're talking yeah. about like a, a trailer in the bogs in Everglades of Florida, where they're constructing tents to display humans with congenital defects. Right. You know, and this, you know, like, he, this guy would still be actually. He was born in thirty-seven. Would he still be alive? Maybe he could be still alive, right? He could be, definitely be alive. Yeah. Yeah. This, nuts i mean the kids are definitely still around i mean i saw pictures of his kids like they're still around they're kicking and doing their own thing same with mary yeah. actually so mary was found guilty of conspiracy to commit first degree murder and she only got 12 years like it's absolutely for killing somebody i mean granted she played up the fact that there was a lot of domestic violence and abuse which i guess worked for grady when he went to court and was like i'm i have this issue you should go light on me i mean i don't know i guess i guess that's an argument to be made but she only ended up serving seven years for this she got out in 2000 so and, and wow. she also moved right back to the city where her and grady used to live and nobody seems to care now i'll discuss that here in a moment too uh the guy who got it the worst is actually her son harry jr so he got charged with first degree murder and he got sentenced to life and he did it because he died in prison in 2014 so wow yeah yeah it's um I, I pointed out this fact that like nobody went to grady's funeral they said it was like maybe yeah. 10 people that showed up they, there was some something that like they kept trying to figure out like who could actually be the pallbearer to carry his casket and nobody would volunteer to do it because everybody hated this guy so we always talk about like that's come up your before family. in your yeah, it's come before. I just feel like we should not have pallbearers. We should move past that as a society. I mean, what's the, what's the, what's the, um, yeah, I guess, yeah, just what would you do? I just don't feel like you should do that. I think it's a lot of responsibility and no. Yeah. I've been a pallbearer before. It's not fun. Have you? It's not a good experience. Oh, yeah. no, I'm sorry. That sounds terrible. Yeah, it feels weird. It feels really weird. No. Like, there's like a corpse on my shoulder. It's like, ugh, I don't know. Yeah. No, we're, I'm, I'm going to vote no on Paul Barris. Yeah. Yeah. Don't volunteer. Especially if you hate the guy, yeah. which like in this case, like everybody did. I was going to say like, we always talk about like, don't kill your family, but it seems like this guy really had it coming. Like it feels yeah, like, like this sometimes was the it's one. It's okay to kill your family. But like, at least like get away with it. Like don't do it in a way that your son goes to jail for the rest of his life and dies there. Like there's a better way to, to do this, I think. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's his story. And like, you know, I made some excuses at the top of like, look, the economic decline, the fact that you're treated the way you're treated in society by your own family, by your peers. Like, it's, you got to, I don't know, maybe it would do that. Maybe this, this is who you turn into under any circumstance. I don't know. But uh, it's not a good way to live. I, w I wouldn't love that for anybody I know. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, especially that being that transition time where you're like, this could have been a job. And then like, it's not anymore, which is the correct Dude, answer. <laughs> but, but also, like, like, don't. But then, pe what are people supposed to do? How much is set, I'm doing the math right now in the 1930s? Okay, so his dad made about seventy thousand dollars. Oh no, you know what? That was that was already transferred. That, never mind. That's it. So it huh? would have been seventy to eighty thousand dollars in today's money is what it would have come out to. That sounds great. Yeah, like it's, you're living in like. The Everglades, Florida. like, yeah, yeah. You're like, that's, you're like the richest guy within like 70 counties of you. So yeah. And yeah, it's got to suck to not have that anymore not have that opportunity. Like, like, that's why with the Joseph Merrick thing, I was like, well, is it a bad thing that we, they did this to him? Like, uh, you know, I don't know. I know. And like P.T. Barnum obviously like is bad in retrospect. I don't you know? know. He made, he made Tom Thumb super rich. Like he gave him like a super, like. 
Right. But he also did like, tons of like super racist and like weird things also that I don't know the details of. But I know that he's like not as exciting as Hugh Jackman. But but yeah, also like, you know, Tom Thumb got a job. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean okay, so P. T. Barnum, I think, was the guy who would put people of different races up and call them a new species of human. I think yeah. that was the guy that did that. And there's another thing I didn't write down here, which she did, which was like also kind of fucked up. So he found this 80 year old blind woman who was a former slave and put her in a freak show, his show saying mm-hmm. that she was the oldest one on earth at 160 years old. She had other issues too. I forgot what it was. Like she was missing like a leg and she was blind or like something. It was something. She was obviously in very, in a very bad way. And he capitalized on it, which again, like, isn't nice, but like, I don't know, maybe that was a way for her to make a living. I don't know. I mean, it's, I'm so conflicted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like we don't, we're not going to do it anymore. <laughs> no, we, we should not do it anymore. You know, but um, I mean, I'm sure there's places in the world where they do that still. Yeah, I think it has to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's got. I mean, yeah. There's definitely parts of the world that that do stuff like this still to this day. Like, I mean, think of how some of these countries treat people who are like just gay. <laughs> like, yes, like, no, totally. Yeah. Imagine like, how ha- we do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Precisely, precisely. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. This was this Taylor. This was the story that I was that I was referencing when I was researching that guy. Ken Rex, whatever that guy was, who got killed in Skidmore, Missouri. And I was like, what? And I asked Chad GBT, when is it okay to kill somebody? <laughs> oh, right, right. <laughs> so, so Chad GBT obviously didn't reply to me, but it, but doing research, I was like, I was like, justifiably, justifiably, the universe seems aligned on two murders. And it's that guy, the Ken guy, and then this guy, which is like, yeah. all across the board, it was like, these were the two people that had it coming the most. So, yeah, that's the story. Thank you. That's interesting. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Going a little further back in time than usual, I guess. I mean, this guy was born in the 1930s, but I kind of like that. I like so. it. I'm going to go further back next week. Even farther. Farther, further, 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 further. I got to get back in the ancient times-ish, you know. You, your story, I literally, while you were talking, I, I typed out, like, what my next story is going to be because <laughs> you gave me the best reminder of one of the freakiest things i've ever read about it's not the Mm. cabin thing that we discussed earlier it's another one that happened like very recently like in the early 2000s i would say i I can't remember exactly but it was i remember reading about this was like oh my god i can't believe i forgot about this this case and um yeah that's gonna be next week oh my god i can't wait sweet well that is our tales anything taylor you want to you want to sign off with i definitely want to ask everyone to please if you're listening please share it with people um just like like our posts on instagram share them in your stories it can really help people find us um i'm like slowly adding people to my to my linkedin and i feel like i'm posting it all the time but then i also get people who are like oh i just heard of this and i'm like okay so like the algorithm isn't just me you know i need to like we need to move it along and share it so please share if you can we're at doom to fail pod um in every place imaginable on instagram um and you can also just if you don't if someone's asking you the best way to find a um a podcast you can just literally just put doom to fail into spotify or um apple Podcasts on your phone and find us there so and i also yeah i also want to shout you out taylor because the graphics you're creating are probably the coolest graphics of any podcast i've ever seen Pars, I'm so freaking excited to, after you stop recording, to show you what I just made for this episode. <laughs> so, oh, they're get so ready. cool. They're so, you did, you did JFK drinking orange juice for our OJ I, and I'm Kennedy. I'm obsessed with it. Yeah. It's so good. Thank you. I really like it. I'm like, this is really good, you guys. And I don't think anybody else is doing it. I don't see anybody else doing stuff like that. Like, it's a really cool bash of our two stories coming together. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, it's very fun. Majority is the most fun I've ever had. Awesome. So. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you, Taylor. Thanks. I'm going to go ahead and kill the recording, and we are off.